And get this, China is actually accusing Biden of playing politics with this new investigation. China's foreign minister reportedly said Biden does not care about facts and truth, nor is interested in serious scientific origin tracing, and also said the U.S. needs to be more transparent about the spread of the virus. Sean, do you remember when China accused the U.S. military of being the one to spread the virus? This is crazy. And yesterday, the deputy White House press secretary was asked about all this. Here's what she had to say. It's not just United States alone as we're working with the WHO. Uh, this is our process here with the 90-day uh, that I just mentioned review. Uh, but we're just going to continue to work with WHO. And, uh, and uh, WHO is going to continue to work with China on this. Yeah, they're going to continue to work with the WHO that has taken their marching orders from China and think that that's going to change. I, I mean, this is... I don't know why there is not more outrage about this. When the reporter followed up with her about why asking why China would cooperate, and she says literally, well, because the truth should matter to them too. Are you are literally, I cannot believe this. You think the Chinese after now are going to go, yeah, you're right. We should talk about the truth. Let me tell you where it really started. We're sorry we've obfuscated for the last 18 months, but we're going to come clean now. Yeah, the same people who didn't tell us it was human to human transmission, Sean. You know, meanwhile, a big reversal by big tech today. Do you remember back in February when Facebook banned posts about the virus originating from a lab? They called those posts harmful misinformation. Well, here's what they're saying about it today. In light of ongoing investigations and in consultation with public health experts, we no longer remove the claim that COVID-19 is man-made from our apps. Yeah. Quite the switch there. Yeah, quite the switch. Remember, it was Fauci who kept yes. telling them all along it had to come from a wet lab, a wet market rather, and now it couldn't have come from the lab, so they banned anybody from talking about it because Fauci is king and what he says goes. But now that Fauci has been caught with his back against the wall because the intel community are overruling him, oops, you know, now it's time to bring in, uh, you know, the reality of what's happening. But we shut out any dissenting voices on COVID until Fauci gives us permission, right? Yesterday, actually, during a hearing in the Senate, Senator John Kennedy of Louisiana asked Fauci about the money that was given by you, the U.S. taxpayers, to China for research. And here's what he said. How do you know they didn't lie to you and use the money for gain-of-function research anyway? Well, we've seen the results of the experiments that were done and that were published and that the viruses that they um, uh, studied are on public databases now. So none of that was gain of function. So how, how do you know they didn't do the research and uh, not put it on their website? There's no way of guaranteeing that. But in our experience with grantees, including Chinese grantees, which we've had interactions with for a very long period of time. They're very competent, trustworthy. Yeah, trustworthy is not one word that I associate with the Chinese party there, right? I mean, this is unbelievable that this is what it's come down to. Where did this guy go to school and get his degree? The school of idiocy? The idea that we're trusting China? Holy smokes. Well, joining us now with reaction, former ambassador to the United Nations and former governor of South Carolina, Nikki Haley. Ambassador slash Governor, how are you? Good to see you again. I'm great, guys. Great to be with you. And just listening to your intro, I mean, gets my blood boiling. You can't make this up. Good. You can't I mean, make we're this up. So Ambassador, but before we get going, I do want to ask you some questions just to level set here with our audience. Um, I want to start with yes or no questions. Um, first, can we trust China? Never. Absolutely okay. not. Okay, and second, is China our friend? Never. They are not our friend. It doesn't take a genius to know that. You know, <laughs> well, we're that so being behind said, the curve. I mean, Sean, yeah. the thing is, like, if you look at our foreign policy anyway, first of all, I mean, here you have the Chinese delegation humiliates the American delegation in Alaska. You've got Putin challenging Biden to a debate. You've got Kim starting to test ballistic missiles. You've got Biden falling all over himself to do business with Iran, all while boycotting Georgia. And then you wonder why we're being hacked. And now what's amazing to me is what is taking so long to get down to the bottom of this? This is about accountability. 
This is about making sure we do something about it. Where is the U.N. ambassador calling for a Security Council meeting saying what did China know? When did they know it? And what was the World Health Organization's whole idea in it? You know, President Trump sent me to Vienna to go to the IAEA to get to the bottom of what was going on with Iran. We went there. We asked the questions. We were on the ground to find out everything that was going on. What is happening in that lab is no different than warfare of another kind. We have got to get to the bottom of what's in there. How is it being protected? When did they know? And you know what they're doing instead? The World Health Organization met this week, and the one country that sounded the alarm early on that said this is human to human transmission, Taiwan is not allowed to even be an observer of the meeting. You can't make yeah. this up. No, it's unbelievable. I, I just, we're, we're this far out and they're kind of going, you know what, you're right, we should do a 90 day study. This is crazy. That being said, Dr. Fauci said that it is, check this out, our duty to fund research in China. Take a listen to this. It would have been almost a, a dereliction of our duty if we didn't study this. And the only way you can study these things is you've got to go where the action is. So I often say somewhat tongue in cheek, you don't want to study bats in Fairfax County, Virginia, to find out what the animal human interface is that might lead to a jumping of species. A dereliction of duty for us not to give taxpayer monies to China like they would ever come clean with us. But, you know, Mark Short, as you know, was the vice president's chief of staff. He was part of the coronavirus task force. He has said that in those coronavirus task force, Fauci made it crystal clear the virus came from a wet market. He was adamant that it didn't come from anything but that. He's clearly changing his tune now. I, I think this really erodes trust in any anything that we believed in Fauci before. Well, I mean, the idea that he thinks we could ever trust China shows why he shouldn't be in the administration. I mean, this is no different than universities having Confucius Institutes. You cannot allow China to tell us what is right or wrong. You can't allow China to tell us what they think is happening. And Fauci is listening to China. That's the first problem. World Health Organization is listening to China. No one should be listening to China. I worked with them firsthand for two years, and there's not a time their mouths were open where they weren't saying propaganda and trying to convince the world of what they wanted to have people saying, not what was fact. There's a real problem here. And I'll tell you right now, if we don't hurry up and get on this, there's going to be another outbreak. There's going to be another virus. And we're so far behind the curve. Australia has already called for an investigation. They're having economic sanctions lobbied against them from China. Canada has already asked to boycott the Olympics. You've got Japan has given themselves a billion dollar stimulus to become less dependent on China. And what are we doing now? We're going to take another 90 days to figure out what we're going to do. This is a real problem. We should already be boycotting the Chinese Olympics. How many more people have to die before you justify that? I think three and a half million is enough. I think if you go and you look at what they're doing, what they've already done to Hong Kong, what they're doing to Taiwan, I mean, this is a country we need to take seriously, and we've got to start acting like we really are on to them because they're running all over us right now. Ambassador, let me just ask you this. Remember a couple of years ago, the big thing with the banks were too big to fail. Is China too big to fail? Do we owe them too much? The problem is we need to change our behavior. We have to stop thinking that China wants to be like us and understand that China is a communist regime and that we have to change our attitudes towards China. What we have to do is get with our allies, get with Australia, get with India, get with Japan, get with South Korea, get with Canada and all these other countries that are furious about COVID. Start to lobby sanctions back against China. Get all of us to boycott the Olympics, because I'll tell you right now, the last Olympics, China saw it as their coming out party. This Olympics is China's, we know this, China is planning on showing they are the new superpower of the world. And if we let this Olympics go unhinged with any, without any issues, you mark my word, Sean, Taiwan is next. And if they take Taiwan, it's all over. I, I agree. And you watched how the Obama administration handled Russia going into Ukraine. I think China's going, okay, you guys did nothing then, you'll do nothing this time. Ambassador, thank you as always for coming on. Look forward to seeing you back soon. Great to be with both of you. Thank you.